rejected God in his entirety for three and a half decades. That's right, three and a half decades. Had I died at any point in those three and a half decades, I would, have, I would be right now in eternal perdition, otherwise known as hell. I thank the Lord that he supported me over those three and a half decades of rejecting him. We serve such a loving and a gracious and a merciful God that even when we are in rejection of Him, He doesn't turn His back on us. He still loves us. And we can know that because our very own fearfully and wonderfully made bodies are a testament to the Lord. We don't have to think about our hearts beating, do we, folks? The Lord is supporting our heart. The Lord is supporting our breath. There's nothing that we need to do in the middle of the night but sleep. We don't have to think about breathing, keeping our hearts beating just right. We don't have to think about digesting our food. Our God is a good God. He's gracious, He's merciful, and He's loving. And He's supporting us, even if we are rejecting Him right now. Just as I rejected the Lord for three and a half decades, He continued to support me. That's how loving and merciful and long-suffering our gracious God is. But we're out here this afternoon, this evening, folks, because it's very clear that we're living in the last days. And we don't want anybody to unnecessarily go to perdition. The Lord would that all should come unto repentance. He would that none should perish in their sins. And again, three and a half decades, had I died, I would have perished in my sins. Now the basics of the true faith-based gospel are this, folks. Unless we believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we're not going to escape this eternal perdition. That's just the brute fact. And I know it's a difficult message for us to hear. It's a hard message for us to hear in the 20th and the 21st century. We have hardened our hearts. We have hardened our hearts over this lifetime such that we don't really want to think about God. We don't want to think about the consequences of our actions. But I implore you, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to try to help save you. We can't save you. I can't save you. My wife, Catherine, can't save you. But Jesus Christ can. And He's a just and He's a loving God. And all it really requires is that we humble ourselves. That we humble ourselves before the face of God. And we believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God. Jesus tells us in John 14, 6, chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. So think about that, folks. In this world, in this 21st century world within which we're living, in this culture, we're told that there are many paths, that we can all follow our own path. Some people practice yoga, not only for physical reasons, but for spiritual reasons. Other people are following the path of Buddhism. 
or Hinduism, Judaism, Catholicism, Anglicanism. We're, we're shown, we're both told and we are shown that there are many paths to heaven. That there's not just one way. But I, I beg that you please compare that to what I just recited for you in John 14, 6, where Jesus himself, these are Jesus Christ's own words. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. That tells us there's only one way. John 3, 16, perhaps the most famous verse of the Bible says this, For God so loved the world. First of all, I want you to hear that. For God so loved the world. God loves us. He wants to save us. Remember, He would that none should perish, but that all would come unto repentance. Let me carry on with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, that means any of us, whosoever includes every single person in this world for all time, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Imagine that, folks. I never even knew anything like this existed. In the three and a half decades of my rejection of God, I never realized what was on offer. And I don't think many of you know what is on offer either. That's why we're here to share the good news. The glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Everlasting life is eternal life. It's life that never ends. Now let's be clear. Let's talk about terms for a bit. We're not talking about this life in this world. It's appointed unto all men to die once. The life that we're talking about is beyond this life. It includes this life, but it extends beyond this life. When we die, when we die, ladies and gentlemen, we are all sinners. The Bible tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. That comes from Romans chapter 3, verse 10. For all who sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. That means we're all sinners, folks. I'm a sinner. I'm a great sinner. Remember, you can't get much more of a sinner than rejecting God for three and a half decades. I am a sinner. We're all sinners. But that sin presents us with a problem. Pagans forever! That sin presents us with a problem because the Bible tells us clearly if we are not in Christ, if we don't believe on Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we are condemned already. That means right now, folks, it means when we... When we die and we pass through this first life, if we are in sin, which we all are, we're all in sin, I've just explained that, if we are not in Christ, we're condemned already. We're going to face the judgment. It's not a popular message, I know that. I know it sounds crazy to some of you, just as it used to sound crazy to me, but I implore you to listen. I implore you guys to listen. If we die in our sins, we are condemned already, right now, John 3.18 tells us. We're not condemned at some future point. We are condemned in our sins right now, if we have not had those sins washed away by Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, that is God, but through Jesus Christ, who is also God. Jesus Christ is both man, fully man, and fully God. When He died on the cross, He paid for all of our sins for all time. He didn't just pay for my, pay for my sins, He paid for everybody's sins for all time, throughout all history. There's only one way that He could pay for all of our sins, folks. He, he alone is in a position to do that because He alone lived a perfect sinless life. While all of us have sinned, myself the greatest sinner, while we have all sinned, Jesus Christ did not. 
and God willingly sacrificed His only begotten Son on the cross to pay that sin debt for all of us, to give us all a chance, because God doesn't want any of us to suffer in hell. We were never meant to suffer in hell. This world right now that we're living in was never meant to be a wicked, unjust world. It was meant to be a good and a righteous world. And a lot of people will blame God Himself and say a just God wouldn't allow this world to be so wicked. But that's turning things completely upside down and inside out. God is a loving God. The reason we're living in an unjust world, in a cruel, wicked world, is not because of God. It's because we rejected God. It's because we rejected His Son, Jesus Christ. And it's through our sins, our collective sins, ladies and gentlemen, my sins, your sins, everybody's sins. The more we sin, the more we fall away from the grace of God. He still loves us. He's ready in an instant to forgive us. Did you hear that, folks? God is ready in an instant to forgive us all of our sins. The moment we call out to His Son in belief, Jesus Christ, and we ask Him to forgive us. And it's as simple as this, folks. Let me just do it myself. All we have to do is call out to the Lord and say, Dear Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that the wages of sin is death. And it's not just this death in this lifetime, folks. It's the second or spiritual death that Revelation chapter 21, verse 8 talks about. When we die that second or spiritual death, that's what we mean about being condemned, about condemned to eternal torment in hell. That second or spiritual death is when we die from, in, from this present life, when we pass from this life, there's going to be a judgment. God is going to judge us. Are we blameless? Are we without sin? And He knows Himself that the only way that we can be blameless and without sin is if we have called out to His Son, Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus that our sins can be forgiven. And Jesus tells us He's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. If we have called out to Jesus Christ and said, Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. Please save me right now from my sins. In that very moment, in that very moment, right now, in a heartbeat, you could call out to Christ. And in that very moment, He is a just and merciful and gracious God. And He will forgive you of all sins for all time. Just call out to Him. Dear Lord, save me right now. I know I'm a sinner. Believe in Him as the Son of God. And all of your sins for all time will be washed away in an instant. How easy is that, folks? It's the simplest thing that we could possibly do. It's so easy, but do you know why most of us are never going to do it? Do you know why most of us are never going to call out to Jesus Christ? Because it requires that we humble ourselves. It requires that we, in humility, come before God and we say, Dear, dear God, dear Jesus, save me. The only thing keeping all of us from doing it right now is we have ego. We are puffed up. We are arrogant, particularly in this 21st century, and particularly in this Western world, and particularly in this um, God-rejecting country called England. We're in a terrible state here, folks. England is one of the most godless countries in the nation. Amazing men of God throughout history have emanated from the British Isles. But now we are renowned around the world as being one of the most God-forsaking nations in the entire world. And we can see the results of that everywhere around us. We can see the growing wickedness the debauchery, the perversion. It gets worse every day, doesn't it, folks? Let's just be honest with ourselves. We all can see the debauchery and the wickedness growing worse every day. 
And that's a, re a reflection of the fact that we are so far fallen from God's grace. We have rejected God for so long in this country. Yeah, most of us really enjoy and appreciate the fact that we live in a free country, quote unquote. That freedom, that freedom didn't come to us through Islam. That freedom didn't come to us through Hinduism and atheism. The freedoms that we enjoy, those human rights that we enjoy, come directly from the Bible. A lot of people don't understand that. Had Christianity never happened, had Christ never come into this world, had His eternal Word not been written down and preserved, we would never have basic human rights the way that we enjoy today. It's the Bible that gave us those God-given rights. It's because we're still living in the remnants of a Christian country that we still enjoy a remnant of human rights. Even the Queen, who I am not a fan of, I think she's wicked, but even the Queen herself, when she was uh, brought into her current position as Queen, she swore on the King James Bible. She took an oath with her hand on the King James Bible. The roots of this country are grounded in Christianity. But that's all fallen by the wayside over the course of the 1950s and 60s and 70s, 80s, 90s, the 2000s, the new millennium. And here we are in 2019, and we are so fallen, folks. I was fallen for so many decades. I was lost. I studied philosophy. I studied classics, East and West. I studied the great books, so-called, of Western civilization. I, st I studied the great books of Eastern civilization, of India, China, and Japan. I'm a lifelong meditator. None of that means anything. In fact, it is a debt against me. Because throughout that time, I was rejecting the only God, the only living and loving God of the Bible the who can do anything for us. In these last days, the Bible tells us there will be mockers and scoffers, and there's plenty of evidence of that. We see it everywhere we go. I should let you folks know, we're not from here, we're visiting. As you can probably tell, I have an American accent. But I've been living back and forth between the U.S. and Britain and the continent, Europe, for the past 30-odd years. I'm a British citizen, but I'm also an American citizen. My wife is from Scotland, but we've been traveling, living nomadically for about seven and a half years. So for seven and a half years, we don't have a home base. We travel continuously. And the good thing about that is, during our travels, we came to Christ. When we left to go traveling in 2012, I was still earning my living as a mindfulness meditation and a creative writing teacher, teaching the philosophy of men, the foolishness of men. During that time, it finally hit us over the head that the only place that we are getting the truth is the Bible. And the more we study it, the more we abide in God's eternal word, the more we realize it is the only truth. This is the truth. That, it was the last place that I had looked for truth. In all those great books, so-called, that I studied, it is the last place that I looked for truth. I had even studied the King James Bible in graduate school. But I wasn't reading it in faith. I read it as a philosopher, and it made very little impact on me. But that first summer that we went traveling through strange circumstances, I ended up reading the book of Matthew, the Gospel according to Matthew. And I realized something in me shifted. That was in 2012. And yet, in my heart and heart, it still took me 
a few more years to actually come to Christ. Do you know why? Because nobody gave me the gospel. I, at that point, believed in God. I knew that we needed to have a foundational basis in truth, and that this world of relativism is just going into the toilet with each passing day. But I didn't know how to come to Christ. That's why it took me nearly three years. You guys don't have to suffer that fate because I'm here to share the gospel with you. You don't have to be like me and wait three years looking for, how do I do this? What do I do? And let me tell you really quickly, folks, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about going to church. A lot of the churches in this fallen day and age are apostate. They have fallen away from the true Bible. It's exactly what the Bible prophesies for these last days. The Bible says in these last days the churches will fall away. They will be apostate. And we see that all around us. The Anglican Church is an apostate church. I was raised in the Anglican Church. I was confirmed in the Anglican Church as a 12-year-old boy. But I left the church. I left my belief for three and a half decades. And I went my own way, living according best that I knew how, according to my own ideas. But the Anglican Church never gave me the true gospel. Even though I was confirmed in the church, which made, means I was made an official member of the church, I could receive communion, Holy Communion. They never told me the true gospel. They obscured it from me. They obscure it from everybody. We share the gospel with Anglicans all over England. Every time I ask them about their salvation, Catherine, every time I ask an Anglican about their salvation, they say the same thing. Are you, are you sure when you die that you're going to go to heaven? They all say to me, no, I'm not sure. I don't know that I am a good enough person. In other words, they are depending on their own works for salvation. But the Bible tells us it's only through faith. It is only through faith that we can gain or attain salvation. In the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah from the Old Testament, he tells us in chapter 64, verse 6, that all of our righteousnesses, or all of our good works, those things that we think we've done well, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in God's eyes. Even the very best of what we have to offer, folks, God looks at and says, they are as filthy rags. That should show you how far we fall from the standard of God's, God's standard. We're busy living according to our standards. I thought I was a pretty good person, and I'm sure if I went around and talked to you guys individually, you'd probably say, yeah, I'm a pretty good person, yeah, I do my best. I thought I was a pretty good person, but it's clear in the Bible that none of us measure up. We all fall short of the glory of God, the Bible says. There is none righteous, no, not one. We are all as an unclean thing. All of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. It's because we're all sinners. We're all in the same boat, folks. We've all sinned. We've all lied. We've done far worse than that. But when we sin, we have a sin debt. And it can only be paid on that day of judgment if we are in Christ. If we are in Christ, those sins are forgiven. They're washed clear away. We are regenerated in the very moment that we call out to Jesus. And that's what I'm asking you folks to do today. I can't save you. Catherine cannot save you. But Jesus Christ can. It's a spiritual salvation. There's two things that are necessary. One, we need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And two, we need to believe that He died on the cross to pay for all of our sins and that He rose again the third day we call out to Christ and we honor those two things, 
and we believe in our hearts that God hath raised him from the dead, in that very moment that we call out to him, he will save us. In that very moment, all of our sins will be washed clear away, and we will be a new creature. Not in the flesh. We'll still be in the flesh in this body. It doesn't mean we're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean we're going to be immediately righteous. But inside, our redemption will be sealed. From a spiritual point of view, all of our sins will have been washed away. We've been made a new creature spiritually. And in that same moment, we get the Holy Spirit to indwell within us. And this is so important because without the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, we are incapable of discerning things that can only be discerned spiritually. I've seen amazing testimonies from people beyond myself and beyond Catherine. Amazing testimonies from former drug addicts and murderers, gang members, people whose lives have totally changed after they came to Christ. When before they were in the grip of sin, they were in the grip of addiction, sex addiction, in the grip of crime. But with the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us, it's not, we don't have to rely on our own willpower. The Holy Spirit will teach us all things. The Bible tells us that we need not that any man should teach us anything. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all understanding. But we have to get that Holy Spirit requires that we be saved, that we call out to Jesus Christ for salvation. And so I implore you folks, I really thank you for listening. I really thank you for listening. Really appreciate it. I implore you to call out to Christ in the privacy of your own home today. Today is the day of salvation because tomorrow may never come. A lot of people thought that they might call out to Christ in that 11th hour, but you never quite made it to that 11th hour. We never know what's going to happen to us, folks. Catherine and me, we could be driving home today and be in a car accident. I've been in car other car accidents, you know, where I could have died. And if I would have died, I would have died in my sins, and I'd be in perdition right now. And so remember that today is the day of salvation. All you have to do is say, Dear Lord, I know that I am a sinner. I know that you paid for all of our sins for all time. And I'm asking you, dear Lord, please save me from my sins right now. Come into my life. I believe in you as the Son of God. I believe that you died and rose again the third day. And in that very instant, you will be given the new creature. You can put off the old man. The old man who was wounded. We're all walking around like the walking, walking dead and the walking wounded. But we can start afresh. And with the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, we can overcome those things that have been keeping us back. We can overcome homelessness. We can overcome drug addiction, alcoholism. We can overcome all those bad habits that we've all acquired because we have been heavy laden, we've been burdened by the hurt that we have incurred in this world. We've all been let down before. We've been let down by our parents. We've been let down by our husband or our wife. We've been let down by our children. We've been let down by the church. We've been let down by the politicians that lie to us all the time. We've been let down to the media that lies to us all the time. Our young children are being let down by their teachers right now, ladies and gentlemen. Our young children are being told that they can be a boy one day and a girl the next. Even our teachers are letting down our children. But we're, we're, most of us are still sending our kids to school. It's a terrible thing. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, folks, we can completely be regenerated. 
not only can we be given eternal life, salvation in that very moment, over the course of time, He will sanctify us so that even this fleshly body will become more righteous as we let go of some of those bad habits, as we turn from ungodliness and instead turn to righteousness, true righteousness. We're going to be here for a few minutes, folks. Uh, if anybody would like to come and talk with Catherine and me, we're happy to share the gospel with you one-on-one. -on -one. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. We'd be honored to pray with you to lead you in a prayer of salvation so that you can know today, in this moment, before you go home, that you are forever saved. We're, we would be honored to pray for you. If you're going through difficult times, if you have loved ones who are unwell, if you'd like us to pray for you or some of your loved ones, we'd be honored to do that as well. And just come on over. My name is Sean. Sean, and this is Catherine, and we thank you very much for listening, folks. I really appreciate your really listening and paying attention to what I'm saying. And um, in Jesus Christ's name, I ask God to bless you all through the power of the Holy Spirit, that as many as you would, as would come to God through the gospel, I pray that you will do so today. And God bless.